Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be going over the number of possible triangle solutions. If you want to follow along, the links to the companion worksheet are in the description below. So what's this about? Well, I put this in this playlist because when we're dealing with law of signs, we need to be aware of the fact of what's called the ambiguous case, and you're going to see that in the next video. But the idea is, is that when we are given information about a triangle, it may or it may not actually be a triangle. And so we have to be aware of that. So here we're given an angle and two sides. And notice that the two sides aren't on opposite sides of the angle. That's going to be different. And so the question is, how many triangles can be formed? Now this angle is rigid. Can't make it wider, can't make it narrower. And we can't make this side longer or shorter, and we can't make this side longer or shorter. The question is, will it reach? Well, in order to ask that, I guess the fair question is, well, what's the shortest distance between this point and here? Well, the shortest distance is always going to be perpendicular. So whatever this is, whatever this length is, will tell us whether two will reach or not. Well, we can find that because this makes a right triangle. And so we can use cosine, nope, sine of 36 degrees equals x over 7. So whatever x is, it's going to equal 7 sine of 36 degrees. Now, I'm going to need a decimal approximation here because I don't know 7 sine of 36 off the top of my head. Again, I'm in degree mode, so we want to be sure your calculator is in degree mode if you're following along. So x is approximately 4.1 as a decimal. So that is the absolute shortest distance. And so if this side length is 2, then there are no triangles formed. It's open. It's not long enough to close. So going down to here, here we have this angle and these two sides. So we ask the same question. What's the shortest distance? So here. We ask, what's the height? What's that distance? And so sine of 30 degrees equals x over 18. So we multiply 18 over. So 18 sine of 30 degrees equals x. And actually, that turns out to be exactly 9. So this is just long enough to reach down and fit. So we have one triangle formed here. And I'll make a note that it is a right triangle. Okay. So on the next one, here we're given this angle and these two side lengths. And so if I draw down the height and I ask, all right, sine of 82 degrees equals x over 15. So I multiply and I get 15 sine of 82 degrees equals x. And on our calculator, we get approximately 14.8, uh, 14.9. So 17 is definitely long enough to reach. So I can make one triangle. Now I'm not sure whether this is a right angle, an obtuse, an obtuse angle, or an acute angle, so I'm just going to say one triangle is formed here. Now for this one, if I draw this down and find it, sine of 36 degrees equals x over 17. If I multiply by 17, we get 17 sine of 36 degrees. And that is approximately 10. Now in this case, we actually have two triangles formed. Now how is that possible? Well, is 16 long enough to reach? Yes, the shortest distance is 10. 16 is long enough to reach. But it could also fit here, just as it could fit out here. So we have two different triangles. 
And what they would look like is 16 could fit here or it could fit here. So if I drew them out, it would look like that. Here's 36, here's 17, here's 16. Or here's 17, here's 16, and here is 36 degrees. And those two triangles look nothing alike, nothing at all. So we have two different solutions here. Now if I go back to here, that wouldn't work because 17 is too large to fit into here because 17 is bigger than 15. What couldn't happen. And so in all of these cases, we had in example one, we had no triangle formed. In example two, we had one. Here in example three, we had one. Here in example four, we had two. What they all have in common is that they all are given side, side, angle. You're given two sides and an angle that's not between them. And so when you're given that information, you have to be aware of the ambiguous case. That's the key thing. When you have this ambiguous case, you could have zero, you could have one, or you could have two possible triangles when you have side-side angle. Now I want to go through a few others to show you how some are, some are different. So looking at number five, here we've got these two angles in this side. And the question is, how many possible triangles could there be? Well, since these two angles are set, you can't make them wider or narrower, that means it has to continue up this way and up this way. So we don't know the lengths, but this shape can't be altered, which means this is one triangle formed. Down here, here we have another case of side-side angle, but this is obtuse. And so this one is actually easier because the question is, is this side long enough to reach? Well, how long does it have to be? Well, it just has to be longer than 30. So because 30 isn't, because 28 is not as long as 30, here we have no triangle formed. So here's another example of side side angle. Whereas up here, here we had angle side angle. Now up here in number seven, here we have three angles. Now they do add up to 180, but we don't know how long the sides are. And so this triangle could be real small or it could be real big. And by making the sides longer or shorter, it doesn't actually affect the angles. So because it doesn't affect the angles, we could double the sides, triple the sides, quadruple the sides, and it would all still fit because the angles would be the same. So actually for number seven, there's an infinite number of triangles possible. And this is the angle, and we're given three angles. Now back from geometry, when you're given three angles, you're not always guaranteed to know what that triangle will be. And so this was not one of the congruent shortcuts that you may have learned in geometry. In the same way, side-side angle was not one of the congruent shortcuts. But angle-side angle was. And so back in geometry, if you were given that two triangles have two, two angles in the side, they have to match. Well, another outcome of those congruent shortcuts is to say, if you know this information and it's a congruency shortcut from geometry, then you know that there's only one triangle possible. But if it's not, then now well, you could be open to multiple possibilities. So side-side angle and angle-angle-angle were the two that weren't congruent shortcuts in geometry. And so here, when we're presented with that information, we have to be aware that don't assume that only one triangle is possible. So here, for number eight, here we're given three sides. Side, side, side. Well, that was a congruence shortcut back in geometry. And really, if you think about it, you can't really adjust the angles. This, this triangle is rigid. It's stuck. So there's only one triangle possible here. So, 
going through this, all we really brought up is the idea that when you have side-side angle, you could have zero, one, or two. If you have angle, 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 you could have an infinite possibilities. But if you have anything that was a congruency shortcut from geometry, then you're only going to have one possible triangle. That will be your solution. And we'll pick up this idea in the next video when we practice how many solutions there could be when we're given side side angle. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, click the subscribe button. If you have suggestions or problems you want to see worked out, type a comment below. To support the channel, click the Patreon link to help keep this going. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.